Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the sale box for the 3rd of January 2013. My name is Total Biscuit, rounding up your daily Steam deals. As always, these deals roll over for about 48 hours, and there is a new set every 24. If you happen to miss yesterday's set of deals, which are currently ongoing, including Knights of the Old Republic, Tomb Raider, Magicka, Sniper Elite, Dark Souls, and Painkiller, then you can check out the video I posted yesterday and get a little bit of information on that. So... Let us kick it off, shall we, and see what's going on in today's Steam sale. Steam sale ends on the 5th, so expect these videos to go on until then. We're going to start with Tropico 4, 80% off, taking it down to $6, 6 euros in Tier 1 and four nineteen in Tier 2, as well as 5 British pounds. Well, this is a pretty good deal, honestly, for a game which is... Quite frankly, just an iterative improvement on Tropico 3. There's not a huge number of differences that you would really notice. It's just an iterative sequel. And as regards to it being an iterative sequel, it's actually pretty good. And it's not a bad game at all. In fact, I enjoyed my time with Tropico as a city-building game. The problem with Tropico 4 is it's got the same bloody issues that Tropico 3 has, in that the game flat-out refuses to let you just build stuff in a reliable fashion, because sometimes Sometimes the workers just don't want to do it. It's really, really hard to get the workers to build something that's vitally important to your city, and the fact that you don't have it completely cripples every aspect of the city, but the workers just kind of sit around and say, oh, you know what, we'd prefer not to do that. You can prioritize things, but it doesn't seem to work half the time. So it's almost like dealing with a really petulant AI half the time when you're trying to actually build your city, which is a little annoying, to say the least. However, aside from that, it's a really, really good game. Great price for it as well. You will not find it cheaper anywhere else. As regards to which DLC is worth having, I'd dodge everything that isn't Modern Times. Modern Times isn't actual expansion. It is legitimate DLC. Everything else is pretty terrible. I mean, the Quick Dry Cement DLC, really? Yeah. <laughs> it's just an extra trait for your general or El Presidente an engineering hat, and a cement factory. It's like one building. It's a joke. It really is. I'm absolutely shocked that they decided to do that. Well, I would be, but it is Calypso we're talking about here, so they have been known for some dodgy stuff in the past. But yeah, modern times is what you want to get. There is a new DLC called Vigilante that is not discounted at the moment, and once again is just yet another DLC where it's one mission, a trait, an outfit, and a building. Yeah, that is not good value to anybody whatsoever. The Thief franchise, 75% off, which takes the pack down to $6.74, €6.74, and £4.74. Now, all of these games are really great. They are stealth action games in the classic style from a first-person perspective, whereby you are tasked with stealing things and accomplishing missions, and generally speaking, not getting into all that many fights. You have to hide in the darkness, you have to be stealthy, and occasionally use tricks and ranged weapons and sneaking up on people with a blackjack in order to get past them. A straight-up fight in Thief is usually a bad idea. Although, there are some interesting situations, especially later on in the game, where you encounter some rather odd horror elements. I mean, all of these games are really, really good, and the one thing that I would say is that there are some problems with getting some of them to run on modern systems. Thief Gold should be just fine. Yeah, that's a fully updated version that should resolve the majority of the issues. However, there are some things like T-Fix and a couple of different unofficial patches that you might want to consider. All of the information as to how to get all of that working is over on PCGamingWiki.com. So if you are considering purchasing the Thief Pack, then please do go and read up on the various issues that these games currently have on modern systems. As I said, Thief Gold should run fine. Thief Thief 2 may have some problems if you don't use the Taff Patcher, and Thief 3, for the most part, is okay, but does have some FOV issues and is stuck in 4x3 resolution if you don't use some unofficial tools. Football Manager 2013, that is 50% off, taking it down to $20 at €25.15. Euros and 15 pounds. It's Football Manager. It's another iteration on the rather popular franchise. I actually have no comment to make on this game whatsoever. Civilization 5, 75% off, taking the prices down to $12.49 for the Game of the Year edition of 5, $5 for Civilization 4, that is €10 Euros and €5 Euros respectively, as well as £7.50 and £2.50. 
Now, when it comes down to Civilization 5, I would only recommend the game if you also happen to have Gods and Kings, which is also 75% off and was cheaper if you happen to pick it up on the Green Man Gaming Daily Sale a few days ago. The problem with Civilization 5, for the most part, is that it's a bit of a technical mess. They haven't actually fixed all of the bugs in the game as of yet, which seems to be a rather worrying trend for Firaxis lately. It's also a problem they have with XCOM. It has pretty terrible AI as well. In fact, I think that's actually the biggest problem with Civ 5. The AI absolutely sucks. It's been improved significantly in Gods and Kings. And as far as I'm concerned, Gods and Kings is a really good purchase. I really disliked the original Civ 5, but with Gods and Kings, it was a much better game. Brings back the religion system, adds a bunch of new interesting mechanics to the game. It still has city-states, which I, as far as I'm concerned, view to be pretty awful. I mean, they're not really all that good a mechanic. I hate the fact that they're even there. But Gods and Kings is definitely a better expansion pack. If you're just getting into Civilization, I would recommend Civilization 4 over Civilization 5. It is a more solid game, and especially with the Beyond the Sword expansion, it has a ton of really, really good mods. Stuff like Fall from Heaven, and of course, all of the other great stuff that comes with Beyond the Sword. There is so much content in that expansion pack. And in the case of Civ 4, it's probably best just to grab the complete edition. It comes with Warlords, which is kind of pointless. You don't really need it because most of that content's in Beyond the Sword, but it also comes with Colonization, which is a really, really good game. As regards to Civ 3, I mean, Civ 3 was an okay game. It, it doesn't really cost all that much. If you're looking for something that's really, really low overhead that you can run on, say, a netbook, then Civ 3 Complete might be a good bet, but... Yeah, I'd say Civ 4 is the best of the series. Civ 5 with Gods and Kings is good. Don't get confused, by the way. The Game of the Year edition for Civilization 5 does not include the expansion pack. It just includes a bunch of Civilization packs and a few scenarios, which is actually not that great. And the fact that those weren't in the game to begin with, well, that in itself is a pretty dodgy business model, to say the least. Bastion, 75% off, taking it down to $3.74, €3.49, and £2.86. I could not recommend this game more. It is an absolutely wonderful action RPG by Supergiant Games. It is the only game they've put out, may very well be the only game they ever put out. I certainly hope not, because quite frankly, this game is superb. It really, really is. It's got an excellent art style, an amazing soundtrack, and this fantastic narration system that dynamically alters what it's saying depending on what you do in the game. And there's a huge amount of dialogue in it. The actual combat system is a lot of fun. Kind of reminds me of some of the older Zelda games in an isometric perspective. It's got a lot of content. You can beat the game in about eight or nine hours, but there's a bunch of additional challenges as well. Plus, the DLC for it was actually free too, so it's definitely worth trying that one out. It's just phenomenal. It really, really is. It's an absolutely stellar game, and I couldn't recommend it more. It was my game of the year in 2011 for a very, very good reason, and you would be very foolish, I feel, not to at least give it a try at that price. And finally, I am alive. 66% off, taking it down to $5.09, five euros nine, and four pounds 41. So this game is primarily a third person platformer. Uh, it's probably best to explain it that way because the majority of what you're gonna be doing in I am alive is climbing stuff. There is some combat, but honestly, the screenshots don't really represent the game all that well because it makes it look an awful lot more like a third-person action game. There's a ton of climbing around the place, and it involves a stamina meter whereby if you run out of stamina, you fall to your death, which is not particularly enjoyable as far as I'm concerned. This game came out pretty late on the PC. It's been out on the console for quite some time. It is not a particularly well-rated game either. It seemed like it was shooting for the moon and completely and totally missed in most places. Places. It seems like it's yet another survival game that misses the mark, really. I mean, you can't really have a survival game if your levels are just completely and totally linear. It's not a sandbox. I mean, it appears like it would be, but it actually isn't. And unfortunately, as a direct result of that, I can't really recommend it for that price or indeed for any price. I just don't think it's a very good game. If you're really into the notion of a lot of third person platforming, then Maybe, you know, maybe you'll have a little bit of fun with it. But personally, I, I played the game and I absolutely hated it. I really, really did. It seemed like a really cool concept and it just wasn't executed very well. And the best way to describe this game is bland and tedious. 
All right, folks, that wraps me up for the day. The Green Man Gaming Sale has now ended, so there's nothing really to track there. But thank you very much for watching. I'll continue the show for the next couple of days until the end of the Steam Sale, and then we might see whether or not it's feasible to do a weekend sale box to round up the deals across the board. It really depends on whether or not things line up properly. Thank you very much for watching, folks, and I will see you next time.